please tell us how did you start out on this spiritual path? My beginning uh, of actual spiritual path was in late of late 2004. That's when I had already come to the U.S. Uh, for my masters. Before that, I was in college back in India, and I was speculating a little bit because I was very unhappy in college uh, with my life as a student there and academics and I was wondering what the purpose of life was and what am I doing here, why do I feel so unhappy like that. And so I was speculating a little bit and then I would read a little philosophy from some well-known philosophers and, I was, and most of them were just saying that yeah, life is a suffering and I said yeah that makes sense, <laughs> and, yeah he had a point. And uh, that's pretty much what I thought it was. And then I, I wasn't really seriously looking into doing anything about it because there was no solution offered by all these you know, Western philosophers. Life is suffering, okay, I can accept that. I know that, I can feel that. And so uh, the natural reaction to that kind of philosophy is that, well, if it's suffering, then the best we can do is try and have a good time while, while we're still <laughs> in this life. Suffer so less. And so I came to the U.S., which is, you know, very materialistic society, and it's, it's very easy to, you know, get material enjoyments. And that's, uh, that's what I was doing. Uh, I was in the U.S. for about a year. And uh, sometime in the late 2004, uh, I got in touch with my brother. And my brother was already a devotee by then. But me and my brother were not on good terms for several years uh, before that. We, we didn't get along well as children. And uh, as soon as you know, I went to college and he went to the U.S., I was very happy. Oh, I don't have to see his face again. Mm -hmm. uh, then somehow circumstances arranged themselves that my mother came to visit. And so we were all in the same house for a weekend. And my brother took that opportunity to uh, start talking about, not about Krishna or God or spiritual life, but just about our relationship. What can we do about, you know, fixing our relationship? He was the first one to offer a solution that let's, let's make peace. And so in the process of that conversation with him, uh, I began to ask him all these questions about what he's been doing in his life these last five, six years that we've barely spoken. And he began to tell me about you know, his, his spiritual journey, his spiritual life, and Srila Prabhupada in his books. And uh, I was very skeptical at first. I said, oh, this is nonsense. You're just trying to make an excuse to, uh, to make peace between us. You think I'll forget all these bad things you did to me? No, no, no. And uh, he, he was very patient. Uh, and he offered me some books of Srila Prabhupada once. I said, no, no, I don't want it. And then much later, uh, on New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve, 2004, New Year's Eve, uh, he again offered me Srila Prabhupada's books. And by this time our relationship was a little better, so I accepted them. And I started uh, reading the book, Science of Self-Realization, just flipping through to see, you know, what does this person have to say. And I read some interviews of Srila Prabhupada, some conversations that are there in that book, and some short essays. and. Uh, there were a lot of very basic questions there, you know, like, what are we doing in, in this world? What is our purpose in life? Just questions that everyone has thought about at some point. And uh, these are questions that I was speculating on earlier, and I've come to the conclusion that, you know, life is meaningless, it's about suffering. But now I was coming to answers that were, you know, firm and clear and crisp, and uh, hopeful, you know, that I have a purpose here, that there is something more to life than just, you know, coming into existence for at least for a few years and dying. And then I know what to do with my life because at that time I was very aimless. I was doing my master's in engineering which I didn't really like. I didn't see the point of doing it but I was doing it anyway. I didn't know what I should do. Like, so suddenly there was this big flash of like, yes, you are here for a reason. You are given this human form of life for a reason. Now use it. So that took hold of me like very quickly. Like within, within two or three weeks, uh, for two or three weeks I argued a lot with my brother. How can this be? Uh, what does this mean? This doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. This is nonsense. And every time he would come back and, you know, crush all my arguments. 
and after a while I realized that I was arguing just for the sake of arguing and I was being very stupid. So then I got to a point where I was ready to listen and uh, understand and what he was saying or what the books were saying. And uh, I started reading a little bit more and I read more of the books and the essays. I didn't get to the Bhagavad Gita very much. I was more interested in, you know, I was suddenly very excited about this knowledge. So I was researching the internet uh, for the life of Srila Prabhupada and other stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got very fanatical very soon. In like the first two months, I was like, this is it. This is the uh, meaning of my life. And I started telling all my roommates about it. And uh, I was fortunate at that time to be living uh, with vegetarian roommates. So I didn't have to, I didn't have any trouble giving up meat or alcohol. Uh, alcohol, giving up alcohol was uh, a little awkward because I was drinking with all these people and then I had to tell them that no, actually I'm not drinking anymore. So then they were like, why, why aren't you drinking? And then I had to explain. Are you sick? <laughs> yeah, are you sick? Or like, what's wrong with you? Or we know this is a passing phase. <laughs> But that, that all that vanished in about two months, uh, and after two months, people, you know, kind of were okay with the fact that okay, Neville doesn't drink anymore. We won't, we won't bother him anymore, and I was very happy with that. But after that, uh, I didn't have any association, so my the intensity of my resolve to do something about, you know, what Srila Prabhupada was telling me, it kind of faded away, and it was always there in the back of my mind that yes. I'm looking at the world now in a different way than I used to look at the world. But was I chanting? No, not really. I was maybe one round, two rounds every other day. Uh, uh, I was following the, following the regular principles, which was fine, which was very easy for me. I wasn't gambling, mediating intoxication. I didn't have a girlfriend at all uh, at that point. And uh, I was kind of moving along. My material, I still had big hopes about my material ambitions that I'd graduate and get a big job. And, and like that. And then uh, then I met the girl who I got into a relationship with. And uh, one of the things that you know, was encouraging was that she was also a uh, newly converted uh, Christian, Catholic. And uh, at that point, I didn't really know very much about the details of Vedic philosophy or Christian philosophy. I was like, oh, she wants to be you know, closer to God. I want to be closer to God. This is perfect. You know, Krishna had arranged this. Specifically for me, <laughs> and it's a fact he did arrange it. And uh, very soon after getting into a relationship with the girl, uh, the first <laughs> regular principle that comes into question is, you know, illicit sex. And we struggled with that a lot. Uh, we never, uh, we never had sex, uh, but there was always some kind of tension about what we can do, what we can't do, and like that. And uh, along this path, I started uh, reading up more because when you're in a relationship with someone of a different faith, you want to know more about your own faith uh, so that you can either defend it or, or explain it to your spouse or partner or friends like that. So I started reading more and more. And uh, as I learned more and more, uh, we started growing further and further apart because there were certain things that she wasn't willing to accept as just as fundamental or something as simple as reincarnation uh, yeah. no just you know because the Christian church doesn't uh, accept it yes, uh, she she felt torn that well I've pledged allegiance to the Christian to the Catholic Church so if I accept something outside of that it means I'm being disloyal so all these, these politics right institutional politics started coming in in the middle of things uh, and along uh, around this time, also I, I graduated and I moved to Washington D.C. and I got a car, so I was able to go to the Iskon Temple more regularly, like once a week on Sundays, like that. Uh, and I I got more association of devotees that way, and more kirtan, and just more people to hold me uh, in case I fell back, people to encourage me to become to stay a devotee. And uh, that's kind of like how my, my spiritual life picked up. And then even then it was, I never really understood how different spiritual life and material life were until I met Babaji uh, on the forums. And just that association 
constant association where I would ask questions and Babu would say do this, do that. And he kept me engaged in a lot of projects. Uh, every time I told Babu how can I help, he would give me all these things to do. And that kept me out of trouble. And I, I guess I'm giving him too much information for this small question. So oh, it's okay. but, uh, that's basically the history of my of how I started being a devotee. And uh, how did you go through this phase of having doubts? Um, or do you think you still have doubts? So there were uh, many phases that I went through of doubts. And uh, the doubts always came up and surfaced when I came to a point where I had to make a commitment. 